Welcome. I'm here with Michael Pluckin, noted author, priest, and friend. And today we're going to be talking about his book, which is coming out very shortly, called Ministry Matters. And um, Michael, you like to say a lot with the titles to your books. Um, your last one was Community is Church, Church is Community, the tautology, the back and forth. And Ministry Matters really kind of has a double meaning, doesn't it? It sure does. Um, I decided that since I talked about clergy in the first book, that is to say the people who are ordained to serve as pastors in the church, um, I could only say so much, but uh, therefore to give a, a book uh, to the clergy in themselves was my aim in Ministry Matters. And by the title, I meant to say that ministry has a lot of issues today but that ministry is still essential. It's important to the life of the church. Well, that's one meaning. Mm -hmm. uh, the other meaning is that your book talks about matters that relate to the ministry right. and things that ministers do. So it has a bit of a double meaning. Yeah. And um, we've talked a little bit also about the fact that your book is not just for ministers. Correct. Uh, this is a book for everybody because underlying my view of and I think it's the view that most uh, Christian writers have had from the beginning, is that the church is a community. We refer to the church as the people of God, the body of Christ. Uh, clergy, bishops, priests, deacons, uh, are not a special caste or a group in the church, but in fact they are uh, part of the church. Uh, Nicholas Afanasieff, who I cite again in this, in this book, uh, argues that in the first three centuries, every church community, every local congregation or church, uh, selected leaders from within that church. Uh, today, we don't do it quite that way, although there's some aspects of it. We're going to get into that. Yeah. Um, but on a broad overview, <clears throat> um, the book is structured as a series of conversations through the right, through, largely through the writings of, of other pastors. That's right. <clears throat> I have slightly over a dozen people that over the years I have read with a uh, great prophet who I believe are worth listening to. So I listen to them. Uh, there are people like Barbara Brown Taylor, Rowan Williams, former Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis, uh, among others. Uh, and I think what they have to say to us is not how to be uh, the leader of a congregation, but rather, what are the things that are involved in being uh, the leader of a congregation? Okay. And you, the selection of people that you talk about is interesting because you have a broad spectrum of people from fairly conservative theologians to um, basically some rebels. Mm -hmm. I think what I tried to aim at <clears throat> is first and foremost an ecumenical selection. Uh, I didn't want it keep it restricted to one tradition or one denomination, that would make no sense. I also tried to pick from people who came from various backgrounds. So we have professional academic theologians like Sarah Coakley and Rowan Williams and Will Williman from the Methodist tradition, but we also have parish pastors uh, such as George Keith, who is a retired priest but a member of the parish here, and uh, even people who never really were leaders of parishes, but who are chaplains like Henry 